Hello everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and in today's tutorial I'm just going to do a straightforward explanation of how I did this bunny and also a little bit about the journey I am on with my Patreon students to figure out how to do this beautiful wet on wet soft fur technique and I'm continuing to experiment with it over the last few days I've been doing a lot with sumi ink and white watson paper and fluid paper lots of experiments lots of new things that I'm sharing with my patreon students and I'll also be sharing some of it on this channel so be sure to subscribe because I upload new videos about once or twice every week so without further ado though let's get into how I painted this fluffy fur calico bunny so to start out here you see me erasing, by the way. I just erase my lines really lightly with a really delicate art eraser, not a normal eraser. And I'm using a white Watson paper. It's a Japanese paper that's very expensive to get here in the US. So that's one of the reasons why I've been experimenting with other papers. Arsh cold press paper works really well for this technique. And I've also been trying another cellulose paper like white Watson is called Fluid. And that will be coming out really soon for at least my Patreon students and I've been keeping them updated also on my Rachel Parker Watercolor Workshop Facebook group. And right here I'm using a silver black velvet oval three quarter. Silver black velvets are my favorite. You can get a set of three on Amazon for $45 and they're wonderful brushes. You don't even need any other brushes than the three that come in this set. If you work on a small format, usually eight by 10 to 11 by 14, this painting is as big as I could get it in the White Watson 11 by 13 because the bigger you paint, the, the more you can let your fur kind of fur out and bloom. But this is a wet on wet technique. And you can tell by the way my paper is spreading here that I'm painting onto wet paper, not puddling paper, but glistening paper. And I explained a lot about the differences between wetness levels in papers in my last video, the Calico Cat video. So be sure to check that out. It's at about minute 3.30. I start talking about different moisture levels in the paper and different thicknesses of paint and how they create different effects. And there are, that's why watercolor is so awesome. You could get so many different effects. But here I'm painting with lamp black. For whatever reason, lamp black seems to fur out better than a lot of other paint colors. But also I'm finding the Sumi ink furs out amazingly, but it does not work as well uh, as watercolor at erasing and, and lifting like I, I do like to do that a lot. I'm painting the ear and I paint in sections, especially for bigger paintings because the, the paper needs to be a glistening amount of wet. And like I said, I talk about that in my last Calico Cat video that I just released. And this is glistening. It's hard to keep it glistening for very long. So that's why I work in sections. So you see, I did that ear. And then as it dries to the buckling stage, you will see me going back and dripping little bits of water to create the cauliflower or push technique, which I have a video about my push technique. And I talk a lot about that in my last Calico Cat video um, about how when your painting goes from the glistening stage to the buckling stage, you can get different effects. In the buckling stage, like that ear is getting to be right now, you can drop little water in or wet paint, very drippy paint, and create little cauliflowers of fur effects. So as this dries, you'll see how that ear kind of furs out where I use the cauliflower effect. And it even worked even better, I think, in the other ear, which you'll see in a little bit. And then I'm getting the face wet and you see where I kept the paper dry because the paint is not flowing into that triangle top of the nose. That's because that part of the paper is completely dry. And you will also notice that the eye is completely white and not glistening, it's dry. I kept it dry because I want ultimate control in the eye and in the markings on the top of the nose just to give the face definition and to have a few little hard edge details to really make this painting beautiful because it's much more beautiful in your paintings if you have quite a bit of soft edges and a few hard edges where you want key details in jewelry. Be sure to check out my jewelry video, by the way, if you haven't seen that to know what I'm talking about, about how important it is to have little bits of jewelry in your painting. And here I'm carefully painting around that eye. I wanna maintain the eye shape as accurately and realistically as possible. And then I'm dropping in cream consistency paint into the glistening wetness of the paper here on the face. And that is what creates those soft fur textures is when you 
drop cream consistency paint into glistening paper or onto glistening paper. And there I sprayed it because it was getting too dry. I do that a lot, but it does create a little bit of different fur effects. It's not as soft. So the best way to get these really soft fur, te uh, fur textures is to paint onto glistening paper and then just let it fur out. And yes, you're gonna lose some control. So you have to kind of practice with this technique and it takes some practice and you can do little test dots. What I usually do is I get the paper glistening and then put a little dot of cream consistency paint and see how much it blooms out. If it blooms out too much, I wait like one minute, but not too long. And then I drop in my color so that it blooms out just the right amount. And see there, I sprayed it again because it was getting too stiff right there on the edge. I do that a lot. There's a lot of different ways to control the water, spraying being one of them, re-wetting being another. So I did that section of the face. Do you see how I'm doing that? And now while that's drying, I'm getting the body of the bunny to the glistening stage. And then I'm dropping in, look how beautifully that spreads. The lamp black just really furs out better than a lot of paint for whatever reason. And by the way, indigo paint is a mix of phthalo and lamp black. So I wanna experiment with indigo paint because both of those paint colors diffuse beautifully. If you haven't seen my uh, video about diffusion, be sure to watch that, because that explains what you're seeing here. These black paints and any, any paint that I drop in and it spreads out, when it's spreading out, that's what we call in the watercolor world diffusion. And some paints diffuse more than others. Here I'm painting very carefully with my size eight silver black velvet round, one of the other brushes in that set of three. It comes with a script brush, oval brush, and the round. And this is the round and you can get tiny details. And look at the eyeliner. That is perfectly white paper that I very, very, very carefully painted around to maintain those tiny little bits of jewelry that really set off the eyes. And I, that is my total favorite part of this painting is how I was able to get that little white eyeliner in and very carefully paint around it with the clear water and the paint so it always stayed dry, resulting in what you see now, that perfectly white little millimeter wide edge of, of eyeliner. Like right here, I'm painting on perfectly dry paper, which I call stage three, I think in my Calico Cat tutorial where I talked about paper dryness. You have to paint on perfectly dry paper to get those little details like those nose holes right there. And that will help add to the realism. Okay, here is the ear that I thought really got some nice cauliflower effects. So I'm um, again, see how I'm working in sections while the rest of the painting dries. I'm painting this area with clear water and getting it back to the glistening stage. We're going from dry back to glistening and look how that paint, it's just so fun during this stage to just watch the paint explode onto the paper. And that's what this white Watson is so good for. It really creates enhanced fur textures. Sorry about my arm there. I'm scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing in my palette over there. You can see how much I'm scrubbing paint onto my brush to get really thick cream paint. So I make sure it's nice and thick so it's, it doesn't um, lighten up too much as it dries, which is called a drying shift. And other spots on this bunny dried a lot lighter than they were when I painted them. So that taught me in this ear, if I wanted darker calico browns, I needed to really get a lot of paint on my brush. So I did that. And here I'm dropping in clear water and you can see how it's pushing into the thick cream consistency paint and making even more enhanced fur textures during the cauliflower stage. So of course this uh, footage is sped up so you don't get a sense of the time. And that's one of the reasons why you might enjoy joining my Patreon because on my Patreon you can watch all this in real time and paint along with me and get in depth as to how I do these techniques. But look at how much that's furring out because I cauliflowered it. I cauliflowered it by using the push technique. My bunny's looking good and I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm using my calligraphy food nasuke pen to sign. And I also used it to create a, you see those little fine lines on the top of his nose and along one little line along the front edge. Uh, I used my food nasuke pen just to put a few little details like that. By the way, be sure, I, I, I forget if I mentioned this, be sure to go check out Bedorka 
uh, Watercolors by Bedorka. That's a YouTube channel here. She talks a lot about these fur techniques too. I've gotten a lot of great tips from her. So be sure to go check her out and give her some YouTube love. She's <laughs> YouTube love. She's trying to grow her channel and she's just brand new. I found her right when she started. It just was a coincidence of fate that I found her cats on Etsy. And then I messaged her and she had just uploaded her first few videos the week before. So I found her at the very beginning. So go check her out. Right here I'm using tea consistency paint to put in the whisker dots and they look dark but they will dry lighter and really delicate and I think they really came out beautifully too. As this dries they get a little bit lighter so they're really delicate and just add to the jewelry. And I'm getting the top of that eye really dark. You want to pop your darks at this stage, balance out your values, make sure all the values are correct in relation to each other in this stage of your painting. Uh, getting that little ear a little bit darker to pop out his face, the edge of his face, just putting little glazes of tea consistency in the ears to pop out the whites of the face. So here I tried out scotch tape. I learned that from Ellen Criminy Trent, who is a wonderful YouTube channel here too, uh, the scotch magic tape. And for me, it didn't work. I get my paint, uh, my paintings too wet. It just didn't stick very well. So I will be going back to my 3M medical surgical tape with masking tape on top of that, which sticks to both my paper and my Elmer's glue backing boards. So be sure to subscribe again because I'm always trying to push out as much information to you guys as possible. And look at those fine little uh, Food Nasuke calligraphy pen lines I got. I love those little details too. I'm gonna experiment with that a lot. I was inspired by John Lovett's work, uh, uh, Gene Haynes' work also. Again, be sure to tune in next week or in a few days depending on how fast I work. <laughs> I'll see you all later. Thank you so much for watching. Join my Patreon, bye. <laughs>